Okay, here we are, episode 42. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I got two of my favorite people who are very enthusiastic to be here. That would be Steve and Melissa Blank. I'm Melissa. I don't know. I don't do a whole lot. I write, and he takes care of the other stuff. I'm Steve. I'm the husband. Okay, maybe not. Um, you may remember Steve and Melissa from episode 38, The Brainy Bunch. Um, I wanted to explore more stuff about them. So I decided to talk about the idea of love and romance, kind of a couples episode, if you will. I thought for sure that they'd be interested in talking about, uh, along with my wife, Cecily, who's also in this episode, I thought they would for sure be very enthusiastic talking about this. Really, when he first started to talk about doing a couples episode, I really was interested in doing it. Anyway, regardless, uh, this is a fairly uh, no frills episode. Um, it is quite long because we did get into a lot of different things. Um, so it's a two-parter. I decided to break it up and make it a little bit easier for you to absorb. Also, too, be sure to check out Melissa's blog, More Than My Diagnosis, and also her GoFundMe because, as, as you can imagine, as a cancer patient, there's sort of a lot of expenses that just sort of come up that aren't covered by insurance. And enjoy this episode. Definitely nothing weird about it at all. You want to see my brain hole? This is Rudy. He has brain cancer. This series is about much more than that, though. It's about people with all kinds of cancers and serious chronic illnesses who might help him process his own diagnosis. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's serious. But hopefully, it's always interesting. The first year is really hard. Uh, the second year is hard. The third year, or I guess we're entering our third year. Yeah, I just hit, I just passed my two year mark. Year two I didn't feel nearly as hard, but the first year was like every day I felt like the world was upside down. I was certain I needed to wake up from a horrible dream. It was a blur for me, to be honest. I mean, it really my second year was the one that was it is was harder just because it was sort of like I was waking up from like oh all this crazy stuff happened last year and like now I'm coming to terms with it. So you have that fun to look forward to the next year. Yeah. I think the first year was kind of a blur, mm -hmm. and it was just. Like we fell into a routine so quickly of radiation and chemo and scans and radiation and chemo and scans and repeat every day. Mm. Like she was saying, it was very routine. We, we had just met the team. They were all great. Everything was laid out. Everything was standard of care. So it was very easy for them to get her into the system and start pushing her through. And we didn't really stop to think. I mean, we had our emotional times, but for the most part, it was like we were just on the ride, just sitting there watching everything go by. Mm -hmm. We're only about a month and a half into year two, and year two has been harder for me because since we're past standard of care, every time we see the doctor, he's changing her medicines. Every time the medicine changes, she's having more uh, deficits, whether it's physical, cognitive. She's had reactions to things. Every time we see the doctor, it's, hey, so here's some good news. There's a little bit of good good going on over here, but there's this big nasty shadow over here that we don't know what's going on and we're just gonna keep an eye on it. So we're gonna change your medicine. Even though he's got a plan, the doctor's just throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. And yeah. then six to eight weeks later, he goes, well, this doesn't seem to be working, so we're gonna throw this one over here. We've really, going into year two over the last couple of months, it's... Yeah, I feel like we haven't been able to settle into the second year. That has to be exhausting. And I mean, just that, and I mean, just cancer in general, it's like there's so many mysteries. It's like, last time we spoke, Steve, you were talking about, you know, being a combat veteran and going through a minefield, and while that sounds really scary to people who haven't done it, it's like you're given tools and things, and you kind of know what to expect. There's still that uncertainty of going through it that maybe it might not work, but like, in some ways, there's more certainty about what you're doing going through a minefield than there is with cancer just because it's like 
oh, you're allergic to this medication or you're having worse um, side effects from it than somebody else because everybody reacts to the situation differently. Yeah, for his year one, it was, he, had, he, he walked, I'd say he walked in between our worlds at least three different times. And Meaning so, I was close to death. Um, and, and there was a lot of confusion because even though I was diagnosed as a, a grade two, I wasn't reacting to any of the standard of care as a grade two should. And so they were like, we're just going to treat you like a GBM. And for whatever reason, that that protocol seems to be working better for me. And then, well, it was working better and then it stopped and then it came back. And so he had recurrent, like they were treating him as a recurrent GBM, though he never was diagnosed as a GBM. So it was very confusing what it feels like when we go in and we're looking for answers and they think that they're going to give you something that you're like really hitching your wagon to, holding on to and thinking, okay, this is it. And then when we go back and they're like, oh man, you know, like then the kind of not really, you know, let's see what else we can do. That emotional kind of start over and that turmoil of being like, all right, here we go. We're going to start back again. And we got to get, kind of get that hope back again. And it's, it's, it's so rough. Uh, actually on that, it's like, uh, you guys obviously, uh, like many cancer patients with dire di diagnoses, uh, don't mind a little gallows humor, a little dark humor. <laughs> <laughs> it really helps sort of to deal with the pain, mass it partially it helps to heal because it takes your mind off of it and distracts you. I mean, I don't know. Do you find that sort of the dark humor um, sort of relieves some oh, of the tension and pokes I fun and kind of takes the gas out of the hot air out of your balloons, <laughs> so, so to speak? If you can't mock the thing that's trying to kill you, what can you do? So I make fun of it basically all the time. The neurosurgeon going into her third surgery, he has gotten used to us, but whenever he would be talking to us about surgery and stuff, like I'm sitting there asking, like when he's talking about, he's got to drill a hole and go in and do this and the other, and he's got to put like some sort of mesh plate in there. And she would be making jokes about wanting him to take pictures and this, that, and the other. At one point he looked at us, he's like, guys, I need you to take this serious. And we're like, we can't. Because we know it's we know it's serious, but this is how we deal with it: is we tell stupid jokes to get through all of the, the seriousness of it. And then we finally hit a point where he started laughing at our jokes. We got him to loosen up. We don't have time to really worry about it too much anymore because we we've, we've already had our breakdowns. We've already cried yeah. enough. We're if you can't laugh, then what? Yeah. I mean, you're really left with not much in your arsenal if you can't laugh at it. Today, I was the, talking with Rudy about wanting to have a pool in our backyard, and I was like, but we'll get the loan in your name, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was about to tell her, yeah, it'd be perfect. Uh, you should get a, let the life insurance policy take care of that. <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta just go with it. I need that like you need another hole in the head. <laughs> so, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you totally do. You have to laugh at all of it. I, I, whenever he was close to death a few times, but the last time, it was really dire, and we had to get a will drawn up and, you know, like all of this stuff. And he came out of the room to sign the documents, and I was just like, it's hospice time. You know what I mean? It's just like complete. And we had guests over, and they're looking at us like. <laughs> <laughs> so, M Melissa, one thing, I mean, is I I kind of get the feeling that we have kind of similar mindsets, how sometimes uh, being willing to go along to get along is kind of a blessing and a curse. And it seems like when you've yeah. been through a lot of crap, <laughs> yeah. for lack of a better term, in terms yeah. of ups and downs and changes and impacts and how impact affects you. But it's like, I mean, I know for me, it's like going through all that stuff and feeling the different changes is like, I'm not really a complainer, but it still gets hard in my mood. You know, I try not to act out with Cecily and the kids. You know, everybody has their bad moments. I was, in terms of your relationship, I mean, going through all of that, do you feel like you've been able to navigate that? I'll say that yesterday I had on the crankiest of cranky pants, <laughs> and I was just so frustrated and mad at the world. And so, at that point, I usually just kind of get quiet because I don't want to let the rage monster out. That's what I do. I kind of go hide in the, in the bedroom and, and yeah. shut the door and play. And I'm like, like, I'm sorry. I'm just so mad. I'm just, I just, I'm, I just, I just can't. <laughs> 
you should be cranky. You know, you should be angry. You should be sad. And there is going to be times when you don't want to have, you don't want to play. And I think that is okay. And I know just in the past, like I said, a few weeks and then even just throughout this journey, I've had to almost defend Rudy in some instances where it's like, well, why doesn't he, you know, do X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, he's dealing with, you know, brain cancer that the doctors can't even tell us what really is going on. And by the way, he feels like crap every single day. Yep. And he's been feeling like crap for two years, not accounting the time that, you know, he experienced his discomfort before being diagnosed. Right. And I'm okay with him being cranky. I'm okay with being sad. Yeah. The hard part of that is giving myself the permission to feel that way. And yeah. that's where I have to really <clears throat> be mindful. I hate the word mindful because it means nothing, but <laughs> I have to be kind of intentional of, yeah, this sucks, but I'm mad at myself for being mad about it, but why shouldn't I be mad about it? Right. You know? That's where the blog really came in because I defend her sometimes on how she's feeling and because she'll try to say, I feel like I'm complaining or I'm whining. And to me, I don't feel that she complains and whines. She doesn't take it out on me, but so I tell her, you have to let it out. And even with her blog, she'll write things. She'll let me read it. And then she'll say, what do you think? And is this going to, is this going to make somebody mad? Is this going to make somebody feel a certain way? And then I have to be the cheerleader and say, I, it doesn't matter how somebody else feels about it. This is about your feelings because they're not the one going through it if they can't handle your feelings it's not your job to try to protect them that's what she says to me about this whole video log <laughs> thing which is like i'll ask her it's like you think 17 minutes is too long for an episode or 27 minutes and she's like what does it matter what anybody else thinks you're doing it for your own sort of sanity hey guys uh speaking of running long seems like a good spot to kind of break this long long discussion apart um hopefully you are as fascinated by this discussion as i am just look for episode 42b for the rest of it should be up now if you are interested in learning more about melissa and steve check out episode 38 the brainy bunch because they're both in that check out uh, melissa's blog more than my diagnosis again link down below. Also check out their GoFundMe, also a link down below. Anyway, I'll, I'll see you in a bit. Lots more interesting and compelling stuff ahead. Did you enjoy the video that you just watched? Then please share it all over social media. And while you're at it, could you also go ahead and subscribe to the Brain Cancer Diaries channel that you're on right now here on YouTube? Like, share, and subscribe.